Hello and welcome to this course, Python for Finance and Trading. This course is going to be an entry-level, hands-on project, and it's meant to settle the basics about Python and financial analysis needed to complete our other financial machine learning courses. In this course, you are going to learn first how to download historical data from Yahoo Finance, then how to plot the data you have downloaded, some basic metrics of trader securities, how to create technical analysis indicators, how to backtest simple strategies, correlations analysis, and finally, an interesting intermarket strategy. So, we hope you enjoy this course, and if you do, please feel free to rate it with five stars. And now, it's time to roll up our sleeves and start learning. All right, first thing we are going to do is head over to collab.research.google.com. This is Google Collaboratory, and this is an amazing way to use Python without even installing it, since it's going to be running on Google's virtual machine. All right, so I'm already on Google Collaboratory, and I'm going to create a new notebook. I'm going to assign a new name, Unimai Python for Finance. The first thing we are going to do is install the required libraries and import them. And then we are going to download historical data for the ETF SPY. This is an ETF that replicates the S&P 500 index. Perfect. First thing we want to do, we want to import warnings and we want to filter and ignore some warnings. This is mostly about deprecated methods and libraries that still work, but are no longer updated or they have changed over the time. But we are, what we are going to see here still works. So warnings dot filter warnings, ignore. Perfect. We are going to try to import Y Finance. This is a library to use Yahoo Finance to automatically download our historical data, but most cases it's not going to be installed on the virtual machine. So if we can't import Yahoo Finance, we are going to install it. Pip install, minus Q, this means quiet, Yahoo Finance, and then we are going to be able to import Y Finance. Let me maybe do a little zoom over here so you can read this code better, right? All right, so we have Yahoo Finance now installed. We want to import Yahoo Finance as YF. This way we are going to be able to call it much faster. We are going to be also importing Pandas. Pandas is a library for data frames and handling data, very convenient and very easy to use. You are going to see that. Then we are going to be importing matplotlib.pyplot <coughs> as plt. This is going to let us plot our charts and our data. Finally, we are going to be importing daytime and from daytime we are going to import date and time delta. This library, we are going to use this library to always download the last 10 years of data without having to worry to take a look on the calendar and try to, all right, so we are on the 14th of June, 2022, so I want to download data from the 14th of June of 2012 now. What we are going to be saying to our code is something like, download the last 10 years, and we are okay with that. And uh, finally, import NumPy as MP. NumPy is a library that's used to perform some basic mathematical calculations and so and we are going to use it in our data to create new indicators and to backtest our strategies. So we're ready to download our asset. YF that download first of all what we want to download SPY 
we want to start from day to day, okay? Uh, minus time delta, remember that we just imported time delta, days equal to 365 multiplied by 10. This way we are always going to download the last 10 years. And we want to end our data download today. And progress equals to false. We don't want to see the pro a progress bar or anything. This is just uh, some lightweight data. It's not needed. Finally, df equals to df drop na. The, in this case, if we have some name data, we can delete it. And finally, print df head. We want to see the header of our data. And we are going to create a very, very simple plot to see what we have downloaded. df.plot, the y-axis equals to close. And time to hit play. It's going to take a while the first time since it is going to be downloaded in this library. But anyway, it's just uh, 30 seconds, maybe a minute. Perfect. We have over here our data header and our plot from 2012 up to today. All right, time to move on to the next module. Now that we have some historical data downloaded, it's time to perform analysis. So we are going to be creating a new code cell and I'm going to add a comment over here. Basic metrics analysis one, returns analysis. What we are going to do here, we are going to be analyzing each date returns to understand what is the mean or the trend of the asset and what is the standard deviation and we are going to be plotting both in order to understand what is a normal scenario and what are those high volatility or iterational scenarios. The higher the standard deviation is, the less frequent is going to be a return and we can say that everything that is being comprehended between minus one and one standard deviation is going to be a normal market. Anything that goes above or beyond that or below, it is going to be less frequent and normally is associated with macroeconomic changes or panic in the market. So we are going to be creating a new column on our data frame that is going to be called returns. And returns is going to be equal to df open dot shift minus one because we exit our trades always at the open. We are going to enter in today's open price and we are going to be exiting at tomorrow's open price, never at the closing, never underestimate gaps because the market, most uh, stocks, uh, most ETFs have a decent performance overnight. This means when the market is closed. So we are going to be divided the against open. Tomorrow's opening divided today's open price. And we are going to analyze the mean and standard deviation of returns. First of all, we want the mean. Mean returns is going to be equal to DF returns dot mean and we are going to be printing that we want to know what the mean return is for the last 10 years and we can see over here that the mean return is 0.04 percent this means that each day that we are going to be on the market we are going to have an expected payoff of 0.04 percent Regardless of having a bullish or bearish day, the market going up or down at long term, we can expect this. It's time that we are going to be trading the market. But it means doesn't mean, <laughs> sorry, it's not a bad one. The mean doesn't mean anything if we don't know the volatility and the average scenario. So we are going to add here mean return of spy equals to this 
and we are going to be printing now we are going to add the standard deviation standard deviation equals to df sorry returns dot std print mean return of a spy plus one standard deviation is comma mean returns plus a standard deviation and another print over here mean return of spy minus one standard deviation is going to be mean returns minus the standard deviation we are going to hit play and we can see over here that a normal day a normal bullish day is going to be comprehended between 0 and 1.4 percent <clears throat> and a normal bullish day is going to be comprehended or in between 0 and minus almost 1 percent but if we want to be accurate we could say that it's going to be 0 0.990904 this is the as you can see the effect of the mean a uh, normal day is going to be a bit higher in percentage day terms that a uh, down or a bearish day all right and now we're going what we are going to do is creating an advanced plot we are going to create a plot that looks at least a little bit better than this one and in order to do that, plt.figure, first we are going to be assigning the size. Fig size is going to be equal to 15,8. We want a big plot. Then we are going to assign a title. This is of SPY returns, SPY. PLT, we are going to be plotting plt.plot. We want to plot the F returns. We want to assign a color. Maybe black is going to look good over here. And we are going to assign also a label. Percent percentage returns. Perfect. Now we are going to add some horizontal lines with standard deviations. Normally we are going to be measuring the markets with one and two standard deviations between minus one and one is going to be a normal day in the market if it's above one or below minus one up to two or minus two it's going to be a highly volatile day anything that's above two standard deviations is going to be a very high volatile environment in the market and anything that's above that uh, it's usually called two sigmas instead of two standard deviations you can also use sigmas it's going to be what we say a random event or something with it that's full of noise so plt dot x h line axis horizontal line it's going to be equal to y the y axis is going to be the mean returns plus Parenthesis over here, standard deviation multiplied by 2, comma, color. I think red is going to look great here. And we are not going to be assigning labels to our standard deviations, but we are going to assign a line style, a plain horizontal line style. And what we are going to do is copy this line over here, multiply it by 1, all right? We have now two standard deviations, one standard deviation. Now, sorry, my bath over here. I'm going to copy this one. Minus one standard deviation, paste, and um, minus two standard deviations. Then, plt.legend, we want the length of our chart to always be on the upper left. If we don't assign this property according to our, the type of data we have and uh, how much space is occupying, in this case, the plot, it's going to be assigned in, into different spaces. For, in this case, 
for this scenario we want to lock it at upper left finally we are also going to have grid and plt dot show we want to show our, our plot and there we have it anything that's b between here this is the normal market scenario this is how things usually go in a low volatile environment like the one that happened between 2017 and 2018 we also see here random noise in the market or big movements that they are not frequent in 2020 you know why and currently as you can see we are experiencing some high volatility that's above or below two standard deviations and this is going to mean as you know that first of all this isn't frequent and also this type of movements are very hard to measure and to analyze in this case the lower the returns the lower the volatility is it's going to be an easy market to trade and the higher it is it's going to be a bit harder all right so that's it for this first part of the analysis now we are going to be heading over the next one I'm going to show you now another way to analyze returns and this is using a distribution or histogram chart and in order to do that what we are going to do is create a new code cell we are going to add a comment over here basic metrics analysis to returns distribution we are going to create a new plot plt figure fig size equals to 15,8 and we are going to create a plt.hist this is going to be a histogram of df returns we are want to have color black edge color because we are going to have vertical lines and if we don't have any edge line or any it's painted it's going to look honestly awful and barely able to analyze so it's color equals to white line width equals to two and we have we want 100 beams that's going to be 100 vertical lines representing the returns distribution plt title is going to be returns Fusion of spy plt x label it's going to equal to return with uh, maybe font size of 10 and the plt y label is going to be the frequency of those returns also with a font size of 10 and finally plt dot show we are going to hit play and what we have over here is the returns distribution as you can see the most frequent returns are always the ones that have a low standard deviation and from here the less frequent they are the higher the standard deviation is financial markets are known as to have a fat tail this fat tail means that we are going to have always very low frequencies of very big uh, returns always negative we can have maybe a couple of positive returns but as you can see right here for example we have a day just one in the last 10 years where the markets fall uh five percent if we were to use more data we would even find days that the market drop at 10 percent 12 percent even but these are always very infrequent they are not frequent returns what we can expect is that tomorrow or any given day the market returns are going to be over here all right so i'm going to use this chart to also explain to you another market property that is called the markov property the market itself doesn't have what we call memory we have a frequency of returns and in order to determine the next return 
we have to understand that the probability for each event is unique. Meaning what? The market doesn't care for what return we had yesterday. It doesn't matter if it was a minus 4%, minus 5, mi minus 2, or 2, 4, or 6%. The market is always going to be traded according to probability, so the most frequent returns without taking into consideration passive returns is always to be one of these, but maybe, I don't know, let's say that this return over here or this group of returns chance or probabilities are 55%. We can say that 55% of traded days are going to be over here, but it's an independent probability. Maybe we can have, despite that, five days or five frequent days or, you know, consecutive, sorry, consecutive days that are going to be a minus 2% each one. And while it's less probable, it can happen. And as a matter of fact, it tends to happen when the market regime is a bear market, a bear risk regime, and participants are uh, selling their securities it tends to happen a lot but keep in mind this concept markets tend to be to have an independent probability and past returns can give us information of the state of the market but always the probability is already fixed on its distribution all right so time to move on to the next analysis Right now, what we are going to do, we are going to create a new code set, comment over here, basic metrics, analysis free, volatility scenarios. And basically what we are going to do here is compare the current volatility against the next market return. In this case, we are going to create a new data frame column called volatility equals to DF high highest price of yesterday divided the lowest price of yesterday and we are going to create a new strategy called high volatility equals to numpy this is where we are going to be using mp where um, we are going to compare here something really interesting we are going to analyze yesterday's volatility volatility dot shift one it's going to be yesterday's return of high divided low. What happens if it's greater than volatility dot mean? If our just if yesterday's volatility is greater than its mean, we are going to get the returns of the next candlestick or the next period or day. We are going to analyze here what will happen on a day trading scenario. So instead of doing the next opening of the next market day divided the current opening when we place our trade, we are going to use DF close divided DF open. And if this isn't our scenario, we are going to set zero. This way, now we can print high volatility scenario and we are going to get up an array of returns we are not done over here right now what we are going to do is eliminate everything on this array when we are not trading so high volatility equals to high volatility where high volatility isn't zero wait sorry high volatility isn't zero and we are going to plot that first plt high volatility and plt dot show so right now we have the percentage returns of high volatility scenarios if yesterday we have a great volatility higher than its mean we have the percentage returns over here what we are going to do now is print average next return on high volatility scenarios is comma high volatility. All right, we are going to hit play. 
all right and we have over here the total returns what we are going to do now is to add its mean in order to add the mean we are going to mp mean parenthesis and we are going to set our parenthesis on high volatility and but right now we have that the average volatility on this scenario is going to be 0 0.002 percent return right let me check if this is accurate yeah all right this is the average return on a high volatility scenario and we are going to compare it to a low volatility scenario we are going to do pretty much the same but instead of greater unequal or equal than its mean we are going to be using less than its mean so a low volatility scenario is going to be where the yesterday's volatility is lower than its mean we are going to add the same values over here and now we are going to low volatility is going to be where low volatility is low volatility it's not zero and um, print the average next return on low volatility scenarios is comma mp dot mean low volatility and right now what we are going to measure is is it worth it to buy the market when the volatility is low or rather to buy it when the volatility is high and as we can see over here the average next return is going to be higher when volatility is high and the average next return is going to be lower when volatility is low We are going to create a new gold cell and we are going to add some technical analysis indicators. Since this has been a common step for mostly all of our courses here on this platform, I'm not going to create too much indicators, uh, just a couple. And the first step in order to do that is try to import uh, Pandas TA as TA. Pandas TA is a library or a module that's going to help us calculate technical analysis indicators without knowing their formulas or having to write it down. In case we didn't have Pandas TA installed, we are going to execute pip install minus q. Remember that stands for quiet. Pandas TA and after we have it installed, import Pandas TA as TA. We are going to create first a couple of RSI indicators, maybe the two period RSI. This is a classic for trading stocks. TI dot RSI. We need to add the closing price in order to perform the calculation. And this is going to be DF close and a length parameter which equals to 2. Also DF RSI 14 equals to TI RSI close equals to also DF close. We could calculate uh, using this close parameter over here almost anything. While it's suggested to use in the original formula the close price, we could, could also use for example the volatility column that we have created before or the returns column and that's heavily encouraged to do because you are going to find some interesting values i think that's uh, worth check it out so length it's going to be 14 and we are going to also create maybe a couple columns of the close price divided the moving average maybe of 14 and 30 periods both of them are also usual in this case don't use the moving average as is because the a moving average at the end is just a time series which isn't normalized and doesn't obey a normal distribution since 
it's always to be growing or decreasing along with the trends of the asset. And at the end of the day, having, for example, a moving average value of 945, it's not going to tell you anything useful. But if we have, instead of that, that the distance of the closing price compared to the moving average is 1%, that's a pattern that is going to be repeated over time since it's going to obey a distribution. So uh, we are going to DF, uh, DF close. It's going to be div divided between TA, SMA. If we don't know the parameters of anything, we can try always to perform control and space. But in order to do that, we need to have first our code executed. And this is a great way to have hints when you don't know how a function works. So we are going to install Pandas TA in a second. And we are going to use hints to know what are the parameters of the symbol moving arrays. Full disclosure, they are the same as the RSI, closing price and length. But this is going to be a great way of helping when you are trying different indicators. All right, so TA, SMA, control space. And now we have the close and the length. Offset and talif are never used, uh, except you are trying to use something very specific. And we are not going to do that on this course. So close equals to DF close. So we could use this to perform or analyze the moving rates of almost anything. Sorry, all right. And DF close divided moving average of 30 periods. We are going to do the same once again. DF close, it's going to be divided TA dot SMA close equals to, sorry, TF close comma length it's going to be equal to 30. All right, so now we have four indicators, two of each type, the RSI, close divided moving array. Um, guess we could add here something like maybe the Williams percent range. <coughs> Williams percent range of, I don't know, 10 periods. That sounds good. TA, will are, as always, if you don't know what to use, he asked, take a look of the hints. We are going to need the high, low, close, and length parameters. So high is going to be equal to DF high. Low is going to be equal to DF low. The close is going to be equal to DF close. And finally, the length is going to be equal to 10. Uh, all right, so we have now a couple of indicators done. We are going to plot them, but first, we are going to drop the name values. These values are going to be generated when we don't have enough historical data to perform our analysis. If we are going to analyze the 30 periods moving average, we are going to need at least 30 days or 30 periods in order to be able to analyze that moving average. Otherwise, we don't have enough data and we are going to have a non value. What we are going to do is df equals to df dot drop name, drop num values. And we are going to do simple plots of indicators. As you recall, we have learned to do very simple plots and a bit more advanced plots that look way better. In this case, we are not going to complicate ourselves since we just want to see how everything's going um, if our calculations have been done correctly. So plot RSI 14, for example, and DF dot plot Y axis equals to will R 10 period. All right, and we are going to execute our code to make sure everything's fine. And there we have it, the RSI 14 of the SPY over time and the Williams person range of 10 periods. Now that we have some indicators and some data, it's time to backtest some interesting training strategies. So let's get to it. Now we are going to perform some simple backtest of our strategies using our new indicators in order to understand how they perform when they are used on the market. So we are going to create a new code cell 
and we are going to create a simple back test. The simple back test, we are going to create my strategy and we are going to be using NumPy. NumPy where, and remember, this is some kind of if else statement where my condition is true, I want to save a certain value, and uh, where this isn't true or an else statement, I want to add another value. So in this case, where, parentheses over here, df, RSI of two periods, we are going to start with a simple classic strategy, is less than 50, and this is usually going to mean that either today or yesterday the market was down and the other day could be uh, up or also down but we want at least one day down when the rsi is less than 50 and an person symbol df close divided moving average of 30 it's going to be less than 0 0.99 this means that we want to have RSI to lower than 50 and our closing price should be at least below 1% of the moving average. We are going to add over here. If this is true, we are going to save the difference between the closing price of our trade. This is going to be open shift minus two minus DF open dot shift minus one shift minus one is going to be the next day open price of the market and we are going to close our trade the next day also at the open of the market now what we are going to do is to plot our strategy as you can see python has one great advantage you can backtest almost anything just using one line of code so now as always plt figure fixed size equals to 15 comma 8 okay plt title is going to be strategy back test we are going to plt plot mp and this is new come sum we want to have the sum of all of our returns in this case instead of just plotting each return individually comma color equals to black comma label equals to strategy returns now plt legend as always we are going we want our legend to be on the upper left then we want to have a grid finally plt show all right so now we have over here our strategy and now it would be the moment to try to test different indicators and values in order to find some interesting strategies and challenging your own beliefs for example, for instance, what will happen if we want to try this strategy but with an RSI less than 30 instead of 50? Uh, we can see over here very little change. Maybe what happens if it's yeah, the price is just below the moving average? Okay, so things like that, for instance. And this way, this is a great way to understand how a market behaves over the time especially if you like technical analysis and you're a technical analyst you are going to have a lot of strategies to test and analyze over here i want to take an opportunity to test classical strategies for example with the rsi we have been told over the time that an rsi of 14 periods when it's less than 30 the market has been oversold that means that the market has dropped so low that it tends to rebound over the time sorry invalid syntax uh, this means that oh i see now as you can see we have very few occurrences when the market rsi 14 periods is less than 30 and yes it's profitable but what happens if we have maybe 
less than 50 and we can compare that to greater than 50. And as we can see in this example, the greater the RSA value is, while it's still profitable, we are going to assume more and more risks. And in fact, if we trade maybe an overbought situation, we are not going to have a statistical edge. So knowing that, we can trade this asset when, while the RSI is less than 70 or maybe 60. Okay, and there you have it. Before moving on to the next lesson, I will heavily encourage you to try different indicators and combinations. This way you are going to gain some knowledge and insights on the market and maybe even try to, instead of trading the SPY or backtesting, try to maybe the stocks like Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, 3M, your favorite stocks and your favorite assets and try to see what happens when you are trying each strategy, the returns and characteristics. As you can see, for example, while the volatility is low, when the RSI is below 50, everything goes great. When the volatility is high, the strategy tries to assume a lot of returns. And once a lot of risk, sorry. And once you are finished, please uh, go to the next lesson and we are going to continue. Now that you know how to test simple strategies, we are going to move on to something that is very special. And this is a correlation analysis. Correlation analysis are probably one of the best tools there is on the market in order to analyze securities and trade them. Why? Because correlations have two important factors. First of all, we have the total correlation between two assets. They can be correlated positively. That means that they have a positive correlation and they are going to move along. They can have zero correlation. In this case, they are going to be great both for trading and investing reducing our risks or a negative correlation when one asset movement is completely the opposite of other assets. When we have a correlated asset, we are going to find that over the long term, they are going to have a similar movement between each other. But at short term, we are going to be in some clues reading the correlation of two assets from the last 13 days. For example, instead of analyzing 10 years of data and correlations, we are going to be analyzing the last 14 days in order to understand how the market is behaving. In this example, we are going to be analyzing the correlation between the SPY and TLT. SPY in this case is an equity index, meaning that it's replicating the performance of the 500 biggest stocks on the US market and TLT on the other hand, it's a fixed income ETF. Fixed income tends to have a positive correlation in this case with equity index or equities itself. But at short term, when their correlations start to change, you are going to find out that we can have some very interesting signals in, in order to understand the market. Because when they break correlation, it means that some high volatile events is happening. So we are going to download a new data frame, DF2. It's going to equal to yf.download. We want to download TLT, comma, from the starting date. It's going to be date today minus time delta. Days is going to be equal to 365, one year multiplied by 10. The end date is going to be date dot today. And finally, we don't want to have any progress bar. Us. All right. We are going to calculate the overall correlation between these two assets. So the correlation between a SPY and CLT is going to be comma. The F close dot core for compilation we have to close we are going to make sure that all parentheses are aligned and they are so we are going to hit play 
Okay, so we have a correlation of 0 0.60. In this case, correlations count range over from 1, a perfect positive correlation, to minus 1, a perfect negative correlation. Values greater than 0 0.60 or minus 0 0.60, if they are below that, they are fine or above 0 0.60. And what we are going to do now is to plot a trolling correlation. So we are going to create a new column on our data frame that is going to be called trolling correlation of 14 periods. It's going to be equal to df close dot plotting. That, mean, that means that we are going to only look the, correl the correlation of the past 14 days dot core df close df2 sorry my bad df2 and we are going to drop num values df drop na and we are going to plot this correlation plt figure equals to fig size 15,8 plt title is going to be following correlation between SPY and TLT of 14 days. We are going to plot DF rolling core 14 color maybe something like black and label was to correlation. We close that parenthesis. PLT legend, we are going to lock that legend at upper left. Finally, PLT grid and PLT show. Okay, so while the mean correlation is at 0, 060, that means that most of the time we can assume that it's going to be more or less around this average. We can see that sometimes its movement is the complete opposite and others it has more or less a perfect correlation. So what we are going to do right now is to analyze what happens when the market is in this zone where we have a perfect correlation, maybe something greater than 0 0.50 and what happens when we have a negative correlation in our returns. Using this correlation analysis, I'm going to give you a very interesting edge, a trading strategy for SPI using the rolling correlation between SPI and TLT. So we are going to create a new trading strategy. I'm going to call it my strategy as before. And this is going to be in NumPy where DF Rolling correlation is going to be less than minus 0 0.60. We are going to buy the SPY or SPY because in that moment of distress when correlations are very low, this market tends to move up and with a very interesting volatility. So if this is true, we want to obtain the difference between open shift minus two minus df open shift minus one or elsewhere we want a zero and we are going to plot our strategy so plt figure fig size sorry fig size equals to 15,8 Okay, PLT title, we are going to call this strategy the negative correlation strategy. And we are going to plot PLT dot plot. NumPy comes sum of my strategy. This way we are going to have a cumulative sum of all the returns. Color is going to be black, comma, label strategy returns now we are going to add our legend plt legend it's going to be at the upper left finally we are going to add 
agree to our plots and plt.show and there you have it this is a very interesting strategy and you can tune this up a little bit uh, using indicators for example right now you can check what's going to happen if also the address side to period sorry is less than 50 for for instance uh, we can play this or what happens if it's lower than 15 this is a very interesting edge because as you see in moments of distress we have a highly volatile environment and this curve is way the and the returns are tend to be pretty stable over the time but now as your duty to try to tune this up is your homework uh, try to add more indicators see what happens on different scenarios maybe instead of the what happens if this is over 50 things like that and you are going to find a very pleasant surprise at the end so i hope you like this strategy that's been all for this course and now to answer one final question what's next first of all you have learned to perform simple of analysis of any asset so now you can analyze any asset you want and understand how it works you also know now how to test your own trading strategies how to implement and analyze other people's ideas as for example our rolling correlation strategy and now what you can do is go over the rest of our courses and learn how to use data mining and machine learning in your trading and how to test it. And finally, if you want to learn more, please visit us at gemboxtrading.com and I will see you in the next course. Goodbye.